Alright guys, I'm shooting this video with my iPhone, so it might be a little shaky at some parts, um, so I'm sorry about that, but I wanted to go ahead and show you guys the settings that I use in my um, Crosshair 5 Formula BIOS um, to get good overclocks and uh, good stability at, um, at higher, uh, higher processor speeds. So, that being said, we'll go ahead and start off with this is your BIOS and you guys who've had the Crosshair uh, 5 formula kind of know what this is. Um, what I like to do is I go into advanced and I go back into, I don't know if you guys can see that, I go into CPU configuration and I turn off um, cool and quiet always disabled and I disable everything in here um, just because I'm not using it so especially core 6 state you want to make sure it's disabled um, you then want to go into your um, north bridge and make sure the IO MMU is disabled and as far as south bridge goes you don't need to change anything in that um, the CPU on off function the ASUS core un unlocker um, I use as disabled and the CP core activation is on auto. Um, now we can get into the good stuff. So as far as what I set my um, this is basically going to be the settings you're really going to want to pay attention to although you want to make sure all those power saving things are off. Um, your AI overclocker you're going to want to set to manual okay um, CPU level up on cancel and whatever you're overclocking you're going to want to just go up very slowly um, before you get to that point you don't want to overdo it with overclocking uh, it's a gradual thing so um, you know I've spent hours tuning this computer um, so don't expect it to just be boom, stable, everything good to go right off the bat, okay? No two systems are the same, and your results are going to vary completely different. Um, I'm just giving you guys a general idea of what I use to stabilize my system. Um, that being said, that's my CP ratio. That's what I leave it at, 24.5, which is the uh, 4.9 gigahertz. Um, I disable AMD Turbo Core, core Technology. This basically will make um, the 4.9, it won't run all the time at 4.9 gigahertz. It'll change and you don't want that. You want it to stay where it's at. Um, it helps stability. Um, CPU bus frequency, you need to keep it 200. Alright. Uh, PCI, keep on auto. Now, as far as memory, um, I have 2133 uh, Viper Extreme 2s, um, which are set at 11, 11, 11, yeah, 11, 11, 11, 30. However, I found in Prime that if I take this, if I take my memory down to 1866, and then um, I go into my timing controls here, and I manually set my timings. Instead of 11, 11, 11, 30, I went down and went 10, 10, 10, 30 at 1866. Um, I tried stabilizing my computer at um, the 11, 11, 11, 30, 21, 33, but I would fail prime um, in like 10, 10 minutes it would fail. Um, however, when I put it at 1866 and went 10, 10, 10, 30, um, I could do your prime 24 hours a day and it don't fail so so basically then you're gonna want to have your I just leave my CP north board and HT link speed on auto um, I disable CPU spread spectrum and I deceive disable the EPU power saving mode those are important um, as far as extreme tweaking I also disable that and I showed you my DRAM timing controls here 
Um, I don't mess with anything else except for the Digi power and basically I keep this on ultra high extreme disabled 130 percent and you can see the other settings um, basically on CPU load line load line calibration or the LLC uh, what that does is if you are say you have your setting at 1.5 volts um, your CPU will plus or minus um, you know maybe uh, well you know it'll plus or minus the voltage so the voltage won't stay the same if it needs to go from 1.5 volts to 1.55 volts to run what it is what it needs to do it'll do that it won't stay there um, if you wanted to keep it kind of a steady voltage you could go on to high or medium um, and that'll keep it it may, may change a little bit but for the most part it'll keep it right where you want your voltage set so those are my settings for this um, and then we'll come down here so extreme OV I have disabled and as far as um, voltage I have my voltage this is now this is going to be another important thing for you guys to understand you need to make sure you have the cooling capacity before you run any voltage similar to mine if you don't have the cooling um, and you see are seeing temperatures really high um, you need to turn down your voltage and you need to uh, not cl overclock um, as high uh, that's just a simple fact you cannot I'm telling you right now these voltage you're seeing right here you cannot run these if you do not have good water a good water, water cooling loop you just can't do it your, 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 your temperatures will get way too high you end up killing your uh, CPU and that'll be it that'll be that so that being said for my water cooling system and you can also check out the video of my system um, I set my voltage at 1.575 and you know I'm probably even at that I guarantee you people are gonna be like oh that's way too high um, but for me it's not uh, I can easily run prime at 4.9 gigahertz with this voltage setting stable and you know at 57 degrees Celsius max so that's where I leave it at to stabilize it that um, at 4.9 and I turn up the North you know, CPU North Bridge up to 1.225 um, I've, I've known guys that will go up to 1.3 but this is just perfect for mine. Basically, when you're overclocking, you're overclocking for stability. Um, so you want to have as minimum as you can, voltage-wise, to maintain stability. So I was able to do that at 1.225. Um, all my other voltages I have set at auto. Um, as far as monitoring goes, um, this is the other thing that I, I, I set all these to ignore just because um, I have a water cooling system and if I have any kind of issues with fans um, it shows up through um, my it, it, I have a different program that, that activates this stuff um, but the one thing I want to point out is if you guys have your user profiles and you have custom uh, for your CPU fan slot or your CPU optical fan or opt fan speed um, and say it runs under that your, your computer won't boot up um, just because it's a red flag for the system and so um, basically I just ignore this because I have my fan spinning at one voltage constantly all the time um, fan speed control I have that all disabled I use a different program for that um, temperature monitoring you want to get your um, temperatures again socket temp right here and um, this is the north bridge temp and then your voltage monitor as well um, you can go into boot you can kind of tell you how you want to boot and then uh, you basically can go into your profile 
I would definitely suggest you save, start saving your profiles. All right. Um, basically, 4.9 prime, 4.8 prime. I can prime these as long as I want. I'm still working on 5.0. Um, I've I'm up to 4.975 stable around there, almost 5. Um, but if I were to just be benchmarking and not running Prime, um, I'll shoot it to 5.2 and uh, eventually I'll get it to 5.3. So those are my settings guys that you guys can use um, to kind of set a base as far as um, everything but the voltage obviously. Don't you set this, don't go right in and set it exactly like mine and uh, without the proper cooling. You need to take it in steps. So um, if it's at 4 gigahertz, take it to 4.1 gigahertz. Uh, run it in prime um, at the voltage. If it's stable, go up to um, a different ratio. So you would go to 4.2. And I say at 4.2, it fails at um, you know 10 minutes. Uh, go in and uh, check up your voltage. Uh, one or two, um, you know, maybe up it to 1.4 volts, and then uh, make sure you run prime again and check your temperatures. So it's it's a constant. Uh, it's going to be a constant battle between voltages, temperatures, and CPU speed. So just um, you know, I can't overemphasize this enough. Make sure you are watching your temperatures. Alright guys, so that being said, I'm going to boot into Windows. There's another side, Windows side, that you need to see to...